Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to show you how you can get started using the goals feature in Asana to set up your goals, OKRs and track different KPIs related to your business. This I think is one of the more powerful and underused features of Asana that really sets Asana apart from other project management tools. Other project management tools do just that. They are, you know, they help you with your project management, which is good. With Asana and their goals feature, they encourage you to think about what are we actually tr trying to achieve this quarter or this year? What's our vision? What's our strategy? What is the big vision for our business? And so you can set up these goals, OKRs, KPIs, and metrics that you're looking to track, and you can link those goals to the projects in your account. And why this is useful is that it, it reminds you and your team how the projects and the tasks that you're working on today and this week are actually helping you to make progress towards the goals and the vision of your company. It's helping to attach more meaning to your work. And that's why I think this feature is particularly useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing your Asana account, or maybe improving the adoption within your team, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana support options. To create a goal, you're first gonna to need to go to the goals tab under insights here in your sidebar. Now, I wanna point out at the beginning here that goals is part of the business subscription. Here it is. Uh, so this will require users in your account to have that business license in order to use this feature. Now, my Asana account here, this is my demo account, is set up as a workspace, which means I can set up team goals and I have a tab to see my goals, goals that I'm responsible for. If your account is set up as an organization where you can have multiple teams, you will have a third tab along here. You'll have company goals, team goals, and my goals. And so you'll have a, a sort of a hierarchy there to view goals either for the company, for a department, or for yourself. At the top here, we can write a bit of a summary of our mission or you know, vision for the business to make the world a better place. This can just be where you put sort of the overarching yeah, vision, mission for your business. What are we really trying to achieve? What are our core values? What are the principles that we really conduct business by? And then down here, we have a section for goals and you can see some of the goals I already have in progress. Now let's create one from scratch and I'll talk through the different options available. So firstly, we're gonna give our goal a title and a good goal should be sort of specific and measurable. So I'm gonna say something like grow revenue by 20%. I can then choose who is the owner of this goal? Who is the person responsible for this goal? And if you follow the OKRs framework or um, if you're kind of tracking KPIs, it's always uh, you know one of the key things you want to do is track who is the owner? Who's the one responsible for, for making progress on this goal? Who are, we, who are we ultimately going to hold accountable? So I can, I'm gonna put my name on there. A good goal, and again, different frameworks like OKRs and KPIs usually require some kind of time frame. So I can say, I'm gonna try and achieve this in the second half of the year, or it could be a Q3 goal, or I could just say, you know, it's a goal for this year, for the entire year from January to the end of December. I can also set the visibility of this goal. I can choose to make this public if I want to make this visible to the entire company, which I may want to do if I want to really sort of inspire my team and make sure my team understand the direction that we're heading, I would probably choose to make this public. Or I could make this private. This would be a really good option if you're setting up goals for individuals on your team. Maybe each employee has their own targets that they're trying to hit. Maybe they need to be private you can make that private. So only the owner and followers or members of that goal here, only those people can see it. So you wanna give some careful consideration there. So if I did make this private, I can then add in other people here. Maybe I want to keep Warwick in the loop and I can choose whether he can edit this goal and, and, and edit the status of the goal or whether I just want to allow him to only comment on the goal. By adding members here, this is also going to send a notification to these people. So even if I'm the owner of this goal, maybe I want to keep Warwick in the loop. So as I make progress on this goal or change the status of my goal, it would be good for Warwick to have an update about that. So I'm gonna add him as a member. 
And then finally down the bottom here, this is where we can choose how we are going to measure progress towards this goal. And there are two options. We can either measure progress automatically, and this is based on the completion of either sub goals, if we create sub goals, or it can be based on the completion of milestones or tasks within any connected projects. So I will show you that in a bit. Or we can have a manually updated goal. So for something like this, growing revenue 20%, um, yeah, I, I, I would probably, we could do it either way actually, um, but certainly going manual may be the option. And I can specify here, what is the actual metric that I'm trying to improve? Is it a percentage? Is it a number? Or in this case, it could be a currency. So uh, actually, no, uh, grow revenue. So uh, yeah, let's do currency. Maybe I'm, let's say, at a million dollars for the year, and I'm trying to get to uh, 1.2 million. So this, this was last year's revenue. Uh, I'm trying to get to here. Um, so that's my, uh, actually, no, we would probably start this at zero. Let's think about it. If I'm starting at the beginning of the year, I'm starting with zero dollars. I want to get to 1.2. So I'd probably think about it that way, actually. So that would be an example of manually updating the goal. Once I've created my goal on the goal page here, I can see a few different things. Firstly, I can track the status of the metric and I can update my metric here, which I'll show you in a sec. I can also set the description of the goal. So I might just want to put in some text, uh, you know, we achieved one mil in revenue last year. This year we'd like to do 1.2 million. I can also create sub goals. This is useful if you want to break down this goal into multiple kind of smaller objectives that you'd like to achieve. This is a really useful feature if you have big initiatives that you're working on and then smaller objectives or kind of goals that you need to complete that help you achieve the larger initiative. We see this is quite common with, for example, nonprofits that we've worked with who are really good at planning, you know, multiple years in advance. This, these are the initiatives that we're trying to achieve and the smaller goals that are going to help us do that. We often find users that follow that OKRs framework, again, often have a hierarchy or a structure where there's the big goal or objective that they're trying to achieve. And to achieve that, you need to achieve these smaller goals along the way. So this is definitely a feature worth taking advantage of and you can break down the goal into smaller steps so it's easier to achieve and you can assign those different sub goals to different people on the team. For example, you can see I've put down here a sub goal which is to decrease customer churn to less than 15%. You know, if we achieve that, if we decrease churn, that is going to help us to grow our revenue by 20%. So smaller goal that will help me achieve the bigger goal. Let's create another one here. We're going to do um, increase sales conversion rate to 10%. So I can either link existing goals as sub goals to this goal, or I can create a new goal. So I'm gonna do that now, and I'm gonna be walked through the same steps as before. So I need to define who's responsible. In this case, maybe I'll say Warwick, but I want to keep an update on how this is going. So I'm gonna add myself as a member. That way, even though Warwick's responsible for it, I'm gonna stay in the loop. Maybe this is a goal for the second half of the year and we want to make this uh, maybe public so other people can see it. And finally down here, again, we can choose how we're gonna update progress towards this goal. So for something like this, because it's a, a measurable percentage, I'm gonna use a manually updated metric and I'm gonna use the percentage option. Maybe we are at 5% right now and we're trying to get to 10 and I'm gonna save that goal. Now, I'm also, I'm now going to edit this goal. So we're on the sub goal page here. Uh, you can see the parent goal grow revenue 20% up here. And I can see the parent goal on the right hand side. Now, I'm going to click edit on this metric because here is where I can be a bit more specific. I just want to change the percentage to a two decimal place number. And I'm going to set my starting value as 5%. So we're starting at five, we're still at five. We're trying to get to 10. Now, because this is a manually updated goal, I need to come in here and manually update this current value every you know, now and then when it's appropriate. Or I can also choose to update the status and the, measure, the metric of the goal at the same time. So up here, I can change the status of the goal. I can report internally on whether this goal is on track. I can say if we're at risk, off track, or if I want to close the goal, I can say that we've achieved it, partially achieved it, missed it, or dropped it. 
So I'm just going to say that we are on track. I can also update the metric here. So maybe we are now at, let's just say 7.2%. So it's going to update my progress. I'm now 44% of the way towards achieving my goal, which is to get to 10%. And then down here, I can write a bit of a report or a bit of a summary of how we're tracking towards this goal. So I'm just going to put some dummy text in here. Asana has provided me with these default sections. I can talk about what we've accomplished, what's blocking progress. I can remove these if I want, or um, I can customize these. So I can put in my own headers and my own text. So this is a really useful internal reporting feature where when I post this now, it's going to share the update with Warwick. I can add additional recipients up here as well. So I could report this to my manager or to executives in the company. I can share this status update now and everyone who's, who's um, a member is going to get a report or is going to get notified about the update of this goal. So I can see now I've set the status. We are on track with this goal. I can see we're now at 7.2%. And if I go back to my parent goal, we can also see the progress down here. So that is an example of a goal where we manually update the progress. Let me do one more. And this one is going to be a, an automatically updated goal. So another sub goal is I'm going to hire five new salespeople. So we're going to create that sub goal. Uh, I'm going to be responsible for this. We'll do it in the... Uh, let's say Q4, and we're going to add um, Lindsay as a, a member for this one. Maybe she's part of HR. And for my update method this time, I'm going to choose automatic. Now, the progress or the measurement, the metric of this goal is going to update as I make progress on sub goals of this sub goal, or as I make progress on projects, either as I complete milestones or tasks. So I'm going to choose milestones for this one. Now, because this is an automatically updated goal that's based on milestones that I complete, I need to connect a project so that as I complete those milestones, it can update the progress of the goal. So I'm going to connect a project here, and I already have this sales recruiting project on the go. So if I take you to this one, you can see the tasks that I've set up so far. So we're hiring five new salespeople. I've got this section here for roles to hire. And I've set up these five milestones for the five roles that we need to fill. And I've got some tasks at the top for what we actually need to do. We need to prepare a description, post an ad online, screen candidates, and so on. Now, because I've set up this goal to automatically update as I complete milestones, when I complete the milestones in any connected projects, so I've only got one here, but I could connect multiple projects. As I complete those milestones, this will automatically update. So let me show you. So let's go to the project. Let's say I hire or fill these first two roles. So I get lots of celebrations, which is nice. And let's go back. If I go to the overview page, actually an easy way to get back to my goal, I can see my connected goal from the project overview. And so you can see I'm now 40% of the way there because I've completed two of my five milestones. If I go back to my parent goal, I can now see that um, here I am, I'm 40% of the way there. For, for hiring new people. And as we see, saw before, I'm 44% of the way there in terms of improving my conversion rate. Now for a goal like this, growing revenue 20%, I probably would leave it as a manually updated goal. But for the purpose of this demo, let me show you what would happen if I make this an automatically updated goal. I can have it autom automatically update as I complete my sub goals. And I'll probably change this to a percentage would be best. And if I save that now, uh, I'll probably need to, oh, there we go. It just reloaded. So now I'm 28% of the way towards achieving my goal because I've completed or I've made progress on my various sub goals. Again, I probably wouldn't do this for this particular example because I'm actually trying to achieve a particular metric. So I would leave this as uh, 1.2 and I just I would just come in here periodically and I would update this as I make progress throughout the year. But the, you get the idea. There are these two main ways that we can update progress towards our goals. If I come back to my goals page here, you can see that new goal that I've created and I can click and expand and I can view my sub goals and see what progress we're making. I can filter my goals if I want to look at goals owned by a particular user or maybe goals that have a particular status. For example, maybe I just wanna see everything that's currently off track. Here are the goals where we're not doing so well. I can then jump in and I can focus on what we need to do to improve our progress towards these goals.
I can also filter my goals to a particular time period. Maybe I want to see what are we focusing on for the second half of this year. I can easily identify those goals. And this would be great for reviewing in a meeting. I could just bring up Asana and we can go through each person's goals, myself, Warwick and Lindsay here, and we can each talk about what we're focusing on in res with respect to these goals. Along the top, I can see goals for different teams for the company if I'm on an organization, or I can just specifically look at what's assigned to me so that I can, I can focus on these in particular. And a final point I will make here is that obviously your goals are only as useful as how up to date they are. So make sure you are coming into your goals and updating them regularly. If you have goals like this that are manually updated, you can actually enable this option to get a reminder to update your goal every week, other week, month, or quarter. And so Asana is actually going to give you a task and it's gonna remind you when to update these goals. And obviously the more up-to-date they are, the more useful it is for you and your team, especially if, again, you're using these goals within meetings or for your quarterly planning, we want to keep these metrics up-to-date. So that is a little look at the goals feature in Asana. As you can see, really useful, really powerful. And if you're on the business subscription, you've got this as part of your plan. I'm often surprised by the clients that come to us who are on business who are not using this feature. As I said at the start, it's a really useful way of being reminded about your goals on a more frequent basis. We often find people are putting in the work and setting up goals in a spreadsheet or a document somewhere that just lives in your you know, Google, Google Drive maybe, and it doesn't really get looked at or thought about that much. By creating and managing your goals in Asana and connecting them with projects, you can be reminded more frequently about how we're tracking towards our goals and you can easily assign who's responsible for them so we can actually focus on what we need to do now to make progress. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.